Thank you for watching. My name is Will Smith. I'm a medical director with Dr. Wheeler for, as you can see, multiple agencies around Teton County, so Jackson Hole Fire EMS, Teton County Search and Rescue and the Sheriff's Office, as well as Grand Teton National Park and Bridger Teton National Forest. Thanks, Will. I think since we're six feet apart, we can probably take these off safely just for this presentation. See if you guys can hear us okay as we go along. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the COVID-19 vaccination that's coming out, definitely a hot topic. So the Pfizer vaccine is the vaccine that it looks like we're gonna have available first here in uh, our community. Um, and with uh, this vaccine, there are some uh, challenges or some hurdles that we have to overcome. The biggest for this one being uh, storage. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine has to be kept uh, very cold. Um, because of that, uh, thawing and administration is uh, difficult uh, for that, uh, just in that we have to coordinate that. Uh, you can see at room temperature, the vaccine is only stable for six hours and has to be administered within that time frame. Um, so the public health, the hospital, and other agencies that are working on these administration plans are really working hard to coordinate and have accurate numbers of people showing up um, every time uh, that they're uh, thawing this vaccine out so that we don't waste any doses. The Moderna vaccine is the other vaccine that you're hearing about right now. It is also an mRNA based vaccine um, and uh, hopefully within the next week or two um, after the Pfizer vaccine becomes available we're going to see Moderna vaccine becoming available locally as well. Very similar vaccine. Um, this vaccine um, uh, has less storage problems. Um, it can be kept in normal refrigerator temperatures and a little easier to distribute. Both vaccines have been pretty extensively studied in very large trials and have excellent safety data. Um, really can't stress that enough. There are very few safety concerns from uh, the Pfizer. Uh, data, which is the data we have the most access to at present, but the preliminary data that we're seeing on the Moderna vaccine shows that it is at least as good, if not better, on a safety profile. The common things that we're seeing that are showing up in these studies are what we expect when you receive a vaccine. You may, at the day or a day or two after the vaccine, feel some uh, fever, chills, body aches, headaches, they typically uh, last no more than a day. And that is really not getting the virus because you can't get the virus from these vaccines. It's just an immune response, which is actually what we're trying to develop with these vaccines. It's a good thing. So with everything in medicine, everything we do in life, it's always balancing the risk to benefit. And we feel with everything we've seen that the benefit of these vaccinations far outweighs any risk. There's been a couple of anaphylactoid, not anaphylactic or typical allergic reactions on a couple of patients. Um, but generally that's occurring in patients with severe allergies. And again, sometimes that's seen and known with any type of vaccination that's out there. So really where we're at in this vaccine development timeline, uh, we've already gone through the development, the basic research, discovery. Again, this is what's happened very quickly. We've already gone through the phase one, which is the safety phase, the phase two, the effectiveness, and now the phase three has been also completed with over 44,000 studies. And so again, there's been a lot of people that have already received this and they've been continuing to follow them closely. There's a vaccine adverse reporting system. So again, we're looking really closely to make sure that these continue to be safe as we continue to gather more data. The UK has already started administering these. This has already been approved in Canada and other countries as well. And like Dr. Wheeler mentioned, the symptoms that you get after you have this isn't actually contracting coronavirus. It's just your body's real response really developing the antibodies so the vaccine is doing what it's supposed to. And there's recommendation not to take Tylenol or ibuprofen at this point just to let the body really get that robust response so you really develop those long-lasting antibodies. Just quickly, the most likely time you are to see those reactions after the immunization is with the first shot, the day right after that. Um, but more people have an immune response after their second shot. Both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are a two-shot series, and you need both shots to be considered fully immunized. 
So a lot of questions and answers. We've given this a uh, presentation to a couple of groups already. Uh, some of the questions that have come up is if you've already had coronavirus, so if you've already had tested positive, already gone through your sy symptoms, already gone through your quarantine period, should you get one of these vaccinations? And the clear answer is yes. Uh, the, the vaccinations are going to uh, give you a much better immune response to potentially catching kind of coronavirus in the future. And again, there's different strains that are going out there. So again, it's highly recommended that if you've had the coronavirus or COVID already to uh, get these vaccinations. One of the other questions we've had frequently is once I am vaccinated, can I throw my masks out? And uh, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. Um, in the area of things that we uh, suspect but can't prove at this point, it's not been proven that this vaccine uh, makes it so that you can't potentially transmit uh, the coronavirus to other people should you be exposed. Um, logically, we hope that uh, the case will be that people will be proved not to be able to, uh, to be infectious after being vaccinated, but we don't know that yet and are still studying it. Um, so we will be still asking people to wear masks um, once they receive their vaccine. Another question that came up is if you do have a severe allergy or if you've had problems with other vaccinations in the past, uh, some of the other questions, kind of if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or under the age of 16, the recommendation is to talk with your healthcare provider and decide whether or not the vaccination is right for you. But if you don't have any other medical conditions, if you don't have any other severe allergies, the vaccination is definitely recommended for the general public. I'm definitely on planning on getting it as soon as I can.